This doesn't get any more extreme than what we're doing. There's nothing fast enough, nothing crazy enough, nothing dangerous enough. None of it matches the adrenaline and the capability of getting hurt. Fun, but super stressful as far as trying to make that go time and get everything to happen. It's fast, it's silver, and it's a small car, and it looks like a dart or a bullet when it goes down the track. The Silver Bullet is a 1963 split-window Corvette. Originally built to run nitrous, the team converted the car to a screw-blown Hemi engine, outputting more than 3,700 horsepower and running as low as 569 in the quarter mile. Myself, Jeff Butler, tried for four or five years to get this car to go down the track, and it would go about 300 feet and smoke the tires. And we came to a point, no matter how much money, and Dave's not afraid to put money at the car, how much money are we putting in this car? We just couldn't seem to get it over that threshold. We knew what needed to be done. The motor had to be moved back. I was very reluctant to do that, to cut up a beautiful car. I just kind of made the decision, came out here with a Sawzall and cut the front of the car off. Decided that was it. Now we're going to do it. Once we did that, the car started reacting to changes, all the good parts that we had been buying all kind of came together in a neat package, and then I just started picking away at the tune-up. Jerry Bickle that built the car said the car would never go over 245, and we've been 263. Some pretty good accomplishments out of a garage in Elk Road. It's race weekend at Famosa Raceway in Bakersfield, California. So far this year, the Silver Bullet team has gone undefeated in competition, winning the last two races. This is the final race of the season, and if they win, they will finish with a perfect record. The team runs a 573 in the first round of qualifying, putting them in the number one position. In the current standings, the seven car field isn't very competitive, with only one other team managing to make a full pass. The pro mods have kind of separated themselves from the rest of the cars. We're going so fast, it makes it hard for a guy to want to go to a race and get beat up all the time by a car that's running 570s and you can run six flat. Two. This is truly what we like doing. And right now, this is the class of cars that we really like to do. But being that the car count is super low, uh, I don't, we don't know where to go next. I think we're 11 or 12 cars as an association, which is sad. We used to have 25 cars. Um, a lot of those cars have gone different directions. I don't see it coming back. I definitely like bigger fields where there's more cars. That's always a lot, that's always a lot funner. I mean, it doesn't, it's not very exciting when there's six cars that show up. So where this sport is going, I think the drag racing will be here for a while, even if they go into electric cars. Um, I don't know that pro mods will be here forever, not at this level. The Silver Bullet team improves on their time in the second round of qualifying, running a 570 at 255 miles per hour, securing them the number one position. Their competitors also improved on their times, with the number two qualifier less than a tenth of a second behind the Silver Bullet team. Because it isn't a full show, the Silver Bullet team will have a bye in the first round and won't race against anyone until the second round of eliminations. The car's running great, well, all we need to do is run great three times tomorrow and you know, win like three times tomorrow, we'll be good. You know, the car's only wide open throttle for five or six seconds, but there's hundreds of hours to be put 
into prepping the car for that. I have a saying that if I don't take it apart, it's going to take itself apart. You know, if you take it apart, you can see the things that are wearing out are going to break. I try to be in front of it instead of behind it. We have 11 passes on the rods, they're replaced. Valve springs go three races and they're replaced. It's an expensive sport. It's more expensive if you don't take it apart and look at it. I love to do what I'm doing. I love to work on the car. I love to find a hundredth of a second, a tenth of a second. It's a challenge. We'll go to the race and I'll capture all the data. I'll take it home and I'll start analyzing it. And I'll look at everything. I'll look run to run and I'll try to figure out what can we do to just find a little more power. And it's amazing what you have to do on a car of this caliber to just pick up a tenth of a second. It takes innovation at, at an extreme level. Uh, myself and Jeff and Brett, I think that's all we think about is what we can do to make everything better. All those little details, that's what gets you to the winner circle. Backing up from the burnout, the team misses a signal from Jeff to move the car to the right side of the lane. As it's lined up now, the car is aimed to hit a bald spot on the raceway and lose traction. They're going to push the car back and move it over in the lane. Reeling from the chaos of repositioning the car, the crew moves quickly to get staged. But as Jeff signals for Brett to approach the starting line, he accidentally leaves his foot in the staging beam. The other driver thinks Brett is ready and proceeds to stage his car. Dave notices that the stage beam is triggered and Jeff jumps out of the way. With the competitor ready to go, Brett has to stage on his own. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I'm standing in the beam. I know. I, I didn't realize it until after the beam was changed again. The Silver Bullet team has won, but it's a bittersweet victory. Jeff catches the other driver on his way back to the pits to apologize. I'm really sorry. That messed you up in any way. I'm sorry. Okay, we're moving. Racing is emotional, but it is because you pour so much of your heart, soul, time, and money in it, and everybody out there has got that same investment. They all pour their same amount of heart, soul, you know, time, and money in it. So we're all like brothers and sisters out there. It's a very humbling sport, I got to tell you. It's a very expensive sport, but you get good guys around you, and it's fun. I, I imagine there's more expensive hobbies or sports than stupid drag racing, but I don't know of any. <laughs> we get out of it. The only thing that we enjoy doing, I guess. This isn't about the money. It's about the bragging rights and being able to take something that is virtually impossible to most people and make it go as fast as we do. As the team is getting called to the lanes for the final round, they discover that the engine has no oil pressure. Taking the pan down, maybe finding one bearing, the number three main bearing, maybe we can see. You gotta start with number three. Yes. You know, I know, that's usually where it is. The team thinks it might be a failed engine bearing. So untangle this cord. Jeff, untangle this. They tear into the engine to try and locate the issue. Bottom drain, come on.
As the clock runs down, they still haven't found the problem. I'll make sure that that on there. Dave talks to the competition to buy some much needed time. And you'll wait for us, we'll wait for him. To cover all the bases, the team decides to replace the oil pump as well. They found the issue, a loose connection on the oil pump, and just in time as their competitor starts to warm up their car. The crew races to get everything back together. The car fires up, and the oil pressure is back. Anyone can drive a race car when the race car is on a perfect run. They don't need driver input. They don't need to be shifted right. They don't need to be nothing right. They'll just kind of go down the trace track all by themselves with a monkey driving it. But when they're in trouble, that's what separates the good drivers from the bad drivers. And so far, knock on wood, I haven't crashed anything. <laughs> Myself, Jeff, everybody on the team make sure that the first thing is Brett's safety. The car can be replaced. We can fix it. Can't fix Brett. So we got to take care of that guy first. I have to go into the car knowing full well that I'm confident in everything they did. Whether it's putting the tire on it, putting the tune up in it, I rely on them to do all of it outside the car and give it to me not to crash, I guess. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Bill. Keep out of your errors on. Oh, you're most welcome. Enjoy the ride. Breathing errors on. Hope I enjoy I got your ride. fire extinguisher pins in my hand, buddy. Awesome, brother. All right, kick his ass. Everyone cross-checks each other. Everyone's accountable for what they do. And they all understand that mistakes, you can't make a mistake. Fuck yeah. I think everybody has some kind of God's gift, and sounds kind of funny, but my God's gift's always been to drive. you drive a fucking pro mod. Fuck yeah! I better have won after all that, huh? Yes! Is that a drag race? Oh yeah, well I fucking great job, bro. <laughs> He's shaking the tires and I'm all go ahead and shake the fucking tires. Stupid is what it is. I know I got there first. Okay. And then I'm like, fucking shithead, you better not have red lit. I was probably a year late and I don't care. Holy crap. The final round's always pressure, but maybe every round's a pressure. I feel good about it. I'm super blessed to be with this team. They're the hardest working guys out here. The track might have went away, I don't know. Uh, they had an excellent tune-up in it, and 
It rattled the tire a little bit, started spinning the tire, and I had no choice but to hang on. When I shifted it, spun the tire again, shook the tire again. As soon as my vision came back after shaking the tires, he wasn't over there in a mall. Yeah, we just won this thing. To win the race, just so awesome. And Andy and their crew, great guys to race with. Between Jeff, Brett, that guy can drive anything and Jeff can tune anything. I just work hard and these guys around me work hard. It's a great day. At the end of the day, you know, I think we persevered and we were able to overcome all the hurdles that we had thrown in front of us. Everybody comes out here to win, I mean, no doubt. But at the end of the dang day on Sunday, there can only be a handful of winners and I'm just super fortunate to be one of them right now. We're gonna come out of this year with a number one we get to put on our car. We've been number four for four years in a row. It's about damn time that we're number one. Can I get a fuck? Yes. That was sick.